All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Google Shopping ads from A to Z. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be setting it up on a Shopify store. Now, there's a couple of things you're going to need to have done previous to this so that you can actually set it up. You're obviously going to need to have your store set up already. You're going to need to have Google Merchant Center set up and connected with the feed so that you actually have the products in the Google Merchant Center. I'm going to put a link to the video above on how to set that all up if you haven't already. You will also need to link your Google Merchant Center account to the Google Ads account, and I've shown how to do that in the video as well. So make sure you've done that first so that you can actually create a campaign. And I've also made a video about how to structure your Google Shopping ads as well. So I recommend you go watch that. I'll put a link above there. That's going to be the outline of how we're going to structure the campaign in this account. So you'll want to go watch that first before we get into this. So the first thing you need to do is log into the Google Ads account. So if you haven't got a Google Ads account, you'll need to go make one. I'm going to put a link in the description below to Google Ads. You just go there and you go through the process, click set up account, make an account, and you'll be taken to this screen. Now, one quick note about that. Make sure you scroll down the bottom and hit switch to expert mode. Now, once you're in the account, it's going to look something like this. If it doesn't look something like this and you've gone through the process of setting up a smart campaign, all you need to do is click appearance and then under here, you'll have switch to expert mode and you just want to click that and then you'll see this screen here, which is the proper version of Google ads, right? So the first thing we want to do is hit this plus icon, which is going to allow us to create a new campaign and you want to hit new campaign. And then in here, what you want to do is select create a campaign without a goals guidance. That's going to allow you to just do it properly. And then you want to hit shopping and in here, you can select which conversions you want the campaign to optimize for. Now, I recommend that you have purchases set up. Now, if you have not set up conversions, I highly recommend you do that. Otherwise, this account's not going to be able to optimize for that. I've made a video on how to do that as well. So I'm going to put a link above to that. So you can go and watch that video as well. Set those up and then come back. Now, here you're going to have to select which Merchant Center account you want to link to this campaign. So you're going to need to do this from the same Google Ads account so that they're actually linked together and that it can see it. So you'll need to select one from this list. Obviously, I've only got only one. So I'm just going to hit that. And then from here, it's going to prompt you to make a performance max campaign or standard shopping. You do not want to create a performance max campaign. In this case, we want a standard shopping campaign. So you want to click this one. Do not switch performance max. It's not going to work as well. Then you want to hit continue. And now you can just enter the campaign name. So I'm just going to call it coilovers because that's what it would be for. You would want to name it whatever is appropriate to your particular case and maybe where you are advertising as well. You can leave all of these as they are. Now, if this is your first campaign and you haven't run any before, I highly recommend starting with manual CPC first, and then you wanna click optimize for conversion value. If you have different conversion prices, so if your products are different prices, you don't wanna just do optimize for conversions because it might start optimizing for conversions of products that are not that profitable. You want to do conversion value because then that's gonna count what the value of the conversions are and then optimize for that. Now, what I would also recommend is once you have run this for a while, let's say a month or two, then you can also try target ROAS and see if you can get the campaign to improve its performance by running a target ROAS campaign. But that's something for later. I'll probably make another video on that later on. For now, you want to just leave it at manual CPC to begin with. Now, you can leave this ticked if you want, and it's going to allow Google to optimize for the conversion. So I would, I would let this run personally and let it do its thing. Now, the next thing is to set the daily budget. So if you want to say a say $1,000 per month, you would put $30. That's the daily budget. And over the month's period, it will average out to whatever that monthly budget will be. Now, for now, you can just leave this. If, especially if you only have one campaign, as it says here, you can just leave this. This is depending on different priorities. If you have different keywords and stuff, it's a more complex structure that you don't really need to worry about for now, especially if you're running your first campaign. Now, what I highly recommend you do is untick this. You don't want your ads showing on the search network because the quality of that traffic tends to be lower. You want it just showing on Google search. So we want to untick this here. Now you want to select whatever location you want it to advertise in. So in this case, you could do everywhere or you can do the prompt or you can select a location. So I'm just going to put United States and hit target. Now that would target the whole of the United States. Now you can also change this from interest to presence. So when it's got interest, what this means is somebody who's showing interest in your location. So let's say somebody in Uganda searching for like coilovers for sale in USA would still get shown your ad. 
And so the problem with that is that's obviously less likely for them to convert. So I would personally select this one here, people that are actually in or regularly in your targeted locations. That's likely to result in a higher conversion rate. Now you want to create your first ad group. You want to name that. Now, like I said, I spoke about how to structure this in that other video. So go watch that video about how to structure the campaign. For this case, I'm just going to put a brand. So this one, that would be one of my brands of how I would structure this particular campaign. And now you can put your particular cost per click bid here. So with this, I would recommend you start with something low, let's say 50 cents. And from here, let the campaign run for a couple of days. And if you're not getting enough impressions, then you can raise it. If you don't put a bid in here, what's going to happen is Google's just going to set whatever the max bid is. And you might blow through your budget on like three or four clicks if it's like 10 bucks a click or something. And you won't get much out of that. So what I would recommend you do is just start lower and work your way up until you find the sweet spot of where you are getting impressions, but it's not too expensive. So now once you've got that, you can hit create campaign. And now we have a campaign here. So now we've got our campaign, but the problem is it's created a product group of all products. And that's not what we want here. So we're going to need to change this. So what we want to do here is hit add subdivision. And now in here, we're going to want to select the products that we want to show. So in here, you're going to need to select the product group that you want. So in order for that to happen, you need to have various settings in your actual feed in the Google Merchant Center to be able to differentiate these products. So for instance, if you're doing category, then you need to make sure that the category of your products has been set up correctly so that you can actually filter through for them. Same thing with brands. So let's say for instance, I'm running this. So it's got the correct brand. So I can select this. Now, if I had another brand, it would have a different brand. So I'll put that in a different ad group. And you want to make sure that you differentiate these so that you can actually filter out the ad groups which are performing better and which aren't. And that's going to allow you to optimize this account much better than if you just stuff them all into one ad group and run all products. So in this case, because I'm filtering by brand, I will leave it like this. Now, one other thing I would do in this case is I would have another level, which is the car models that they're for as well. But that's a separate thing entirely. I spoke about that in that other video about how to structure the campaign. So for now, I'm just going to leave it on brand. I'm going to hit continue. And now you can obviously adjust the bid. So I'm going to leave this as it is. And now we have the McGowan Racing product group. So with the everything else one, you could just exclude that. And now it would only show McGowan Racing coilovers in the McGowan Racing ad group. So that's exactly what we would want here. So now what's going to happen is these are only going to show together. And now you're going to see the data of the clicks and impressions for that particular group of products, which is going to allow you, like I said, to see what's working, what isn't. So now we can go into the ads. So basically the ads are going to be created automatically through Google. However, there is a way you can control this. So I'm going to show you how to do this. If you go into the Google Merchant Center and pull up your products, what you can actually do is optimize the meta titles and the descriptions on each of your products. You can edit the product. And so you have the title and the description. And so if you want it to show differently, you can actually edit this headline and this description, and that's going to alter what it shows up as in the actual ad. And so that allows you to play around with this and try and make the best headline and the best description you can to make the ad stand out and get people to click on it. So that's one thing you can do here. Now, what you do want to do next is you want to go into the keywords and you're going to need to add the negative keywords. So in a shopping campaign, you can't put specific positive keywords. They get done automatically. But what you can do is exclude a bunch of keywords that your ads are likely to show up for so that they don't and you don't waste clicks. Now I'm going to show you how you find these out. So what you want to do is go to tools and then go to keyword planner and open that up ideally in a separate tab. And what we're going to do here is actually research the keywords and find out what Google thinks is similar so that we can exclude those specifically. So set the correct location, which is the same one that this is running for you go United States in this case. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my target keyword in here. So I'm again, racing coilovers. That's what my product is. And I'm going to hit get results. And now what it's going to do is it's going to show all of the things that Google thinks is related to this particular keyword. So we can see here immediately right off the bat, we've got exhaust. We do not want exhausts because we're not selling exhausts. Lowering springs, we don't want that either because we don't have lowering springs. So what I'm doing is I'm opening a notepad and I'm adding these to the notepad here. And then what we'll do is we will add this to the list of negative keywords afterwards. So let's go down this list. That's okay. That's okay. These are all okay. Downpipe. 
you want to make sure you get all of these because if you don't get all of these now, what's going to happen is Google's going to show the ad for these keywords and you're going to waste your ad budget. So you want to try and eliminate as many of them as you possibly can. Another one, big break kit. Definitely don't want that. We'll put breaks as well. Customer service. We don't want that. Don't pay for that. Header. Put header and headers because I know that that's a related keyword. And you can see it down there as well. Motor mounts. See, all of these are keywords that Google thought are similar. And if we don't eliminate them, what's going to happen is the ad's going to show, like I said, and then you're wasting your time. I'm going to put replacement parts as well. Ramp. Shock. Shocks as well. Short shifter. Struts. Suspension kit could go either way, so I'm going to leave that. Wing, definitely not. Y pipe, definitely not. Okay, so that's through that list. So now we have a big list of negative keywords that our ads would have shown for, we would have paid for if we didn't do this. So now what we want to do is copy that list, go into negative keywords, hit add, you select the correct ad group and you add them. Now I'm going to add all these as a phrase match, so I'm just going to paste them in and then I'm going to select them all and then go change match type and I'm going to change it to phrase match. That's just going to ensure that if that phrase is in the keyword, then it's not going to show. Broad match is a bit too broad. It might start excluding other stuff we don't want. So I'm just going to put phrase. And so once they're in there, now these should be excluded. Now what you'll want to do, and this is a quick tip for optimizing later on, is once the ad account has been running for like a week or two, actually you want to do it pretty much straight away, but you want to go in there consistently, go under insights and reports, and then go search terms report. Now under here, it's not going to show anything now because this is a new campaign, but what it would show you here is the list of keywords that your ads actually did show for. And most of them or a lot of them will have clicks on them. And so what you want to do is go through that list regularly and see if you can spot any that are actually not related to what you're trying to advertise. And what you do is you add that keyword into the negative list as well. And so that's going to allow you to eliminate all of those unrelated keywords if some are actually still showing. So that's the majority of, of setting this up. The campaign is now pretty much ready to go. We could hit go on this. One other thing I want to show you quickly as well is the audiences. So what you can do is you can go down here to audiences, keywords, content and go audiences. And now what you want to do is you can add audience segments here. So what you would do is hit add audience segments. You can either add it to the campaign or the specific ad group. And so what this allows you to do is you can either target specific audiences or you can just observe them. So you can set them for observation and just allow the account to give you data on it without specifically targeting anybody. And what that's going to be able to do is you can see if certain audiences are working better than others and then you can exclude some and you can include others so that you only target those specific ones. So if you don't set this, you're not going to have any data. But let's say right now we could put auto parts and accessories as a particular audience high performance aftermarket auto parts, auto exterior parts, that won't be this because we're not, we're not doing it because this is just suspension. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that because if we find that this has lower, if it's getting clicks, but lower conversions, we can exclude them. We can do auto enthusiast. That's a type of person, auto repair and maintenance. And we can do, let's see if there's suspension. Okay. They don't have suspension. So you just want to try and find as close as you can to to what you are actually offering. So see, for instance, affinity is auto enthusiasts. And then here's like in the market for these particular parts. So we'll probably find that high performance and aftermarket auto parts is probably going to be the best performer, but we'll see once the campaign's actually running. And then what you want to do is hit save. And so now with observation, it's not going to narrow anything down, but it's just going to give you that data. And so what you can do later on is once it's been running for a while, you can come back in and you could actually edit this and set it to target the specific audience or make a new campaign just targeting that specific audience and allow that to optimize for that and you'll probably find you get better results now one other thing you'll want to do once the campaign has actually been running for a while let's say a month or two months what you want to do is go into campaigns i mentioned this earlier in this tutorial but you can go in here and you can actually i would duplicate this campaign so don't just change the bidding strategy but actually copy it and paste it so right now i'm actually going to put in this one manual cpc and then just put USA so that we know. And so what I'm going to do is copy it and paste the new one. And then the new one is going to be the, the target ROAS one. So I'm just going to pause it. 
And so, yeah, what you'd want to do is allow the campaign to run for like a month or two, get some data on the manual CPC bidding so that you can actually compare it and then duplicate the campaign. And on the new campaign, the only thing you want to change is target ROAS bidding strategy. So you would pause this one, enable the other one and just let it run for a while. Let that run for a couple of weeks or a month as well and then see how it compares to the, the first one. Because you might find a, a lot of the time that the target ROAS one will perform better. Sometimes it'll perform worse. And so what you want to do is find which one is working best for your specific situation and roll with that one. So I'm just going to show you how to do that once this port pastes. So you can see now we have two campaigns. What I'm going to do is change this one. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to change it to target ROAS. So I know which one's which. Hit save. And then I'll just go into the settings. So you can actually do that right from here. You just click that and then go edit, change bid strategy. And here you would go to target ROAS. Now, what you want to do here under target ROAS is you want to enter the target ROAS that you actually want this campaign to achieve. So let's say, for instance, you want to make $5 for every $1 that you spend on ads. You would want to type in 500% so that that way it tries to make a 500% return on your ad spend. And in here for the name, you could just put 500% ROAS. I'm just going to put that there as the name of the bidding strategy. And then we can hit apply. And so what's going to happen now is this account would optimize to try and hit that amount that you are trying to achieve. So that's it. That's how you set up a shopping campaign in Google ads. And like I mentioned a few times in this video, you'll want to go back and optimize this. Ideally with the search terms report is the primary way to do this. You'd want to analyze the audiences as well and which products are actually performing well and which are not. So those are the basic optimizations, which I will probably cover in an upcoming video on how to go through and actually do that. Now, if you'd like me to coach you on how to run a profitable Google ads campaign for your e-com store for only $49 a month, go to learndominatemarketing.com. And if you'd like us to run your Google ads for your e-com store with guaranteed results, go to dominatemarketing.io, book a call with us there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch you on the next one.